phenomenal. Um, do you? Uh, I'm sure you're not a Trump supporter. No, not at all. Um, do you? As as many presidents have you seen come and go in your time and voted? Have you ever seen anything this crazy? No. Nothing like this. No, nothing. No. Um, and now he's accused Barack Obama of a crime. <laughs> I did the same thing. I laughed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude's got to do something on the weekend. You know, when he leaves, he's sitting, you know, like somebody said, he's sitting on the toilet thinking, oh, he must be wiretapping me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let me say that. Me say, you know. Distraction I mean, tactic. Yeah, I mean, it's not like dude is like, you know, doing his homework and reading the briefing from everybody else, you know. So he just, you know, he hears something on the radio. And I guess they're saying, you know, this is something he heard on Breitbart last week or whatever. And all of a sudden he... Well, his friend runs that site. His one, yeah. his one racist friend runs that site. That's not his only racist friend. Well, the, the uh, one the that's dude, in there all the time. Yeah the, yeah, the one that's in his ear. Right. All the time. That's because the other dude is just as racist as, you know, he is. So there's a few of those, and, you know, you got to... Man, come on. I mean, if, you know, politics will make us crazy. We need to do something. You know, people need to do what we're doing. Keep on resisting. Keep on raising your voice, you know. And eventually, you know... Something's going to catch up with dude. Yeah. You know, I mean, he can't keep denying all of that, you know. Where there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not even one of those where those smoke, I'm not a where there's smoke, there's fire guy, but where there's incompetence, <laughs> there's failure. Yeah. You know, so let's just give it, you know, let's give that. it time. Give yeah. it time. Um, you, are you happy with what you're seeing as far as young people and the activism? You know, and people really, because there is that silver lining of yeah, this Yeah, well, it's kind of late, though. You know, they should have been doing that when it was time to vote. They needed motivate. Yeah. They needed an enemy. <laughs> yeah, they we needed, needed an that. enemy. See, that's what we needed then. But everybody, you know, half of them were pissed off because Bernie Sanders didn't get nominated, and that mm -hmm. was their guy. And it was like, look, but you don't understand, not voting is a vote for the wrong person. And staying home cost you. And now you want a new election, you know, three days later, it's like, oh, we got to have a new election. I'm, I'm in the streets. So vote over. No, dude, that's not how it works. I know. But for a lot of young way. people, all they knew was Barack Obama. So they felt that, oh, it's all good. They yeah, felt but, like it was all good. I well, think that's now... not all they knew was Barack Obama. The people who were of age to vote knew Bush before that, and they knew whatever. The only people that only knew Bakarama are people at eight years old. Well, no, well, you had some people who their first vote yeah. was 18. I got that. And they wasn't paying attention before that. They should have been. Well, yes. You know, well, but that's part of the problem that people don't pay attention or there's a generation that gets their news from the wrong place or doesn't get any news at all. All they do is, right. you know, they text their friends and they talk about it and then politics is not part of what their life is because they don't understand that they're going to be affected by it down the line. And I get it. I mean, I've been young once, but when we were young... We didn't have the distractions of, you know, online. We had each other to talk to and we could see what we wanted to um, fight against or those things were ever present in our lives. And we didn't have the advantages that, you know, young people have today. So we had to fight. We had to be in the street and we had to raise our voices and make things happen. Um, but, you know, it's a level of comfort, you know, happened that we just didn't have. And now they're going to see what that is because that level of comfort is being taken or they're going to see a lot of their friends being infringed upon in a different way than they have been before, you know, and um, sort of things that they've taken for granted are not going to be there anymore. Mm -hmm. So they got to raise their voices and they got to fight. Um, which brings me to a next piece and listening to you talk. It's not often that we get to sit across and hear from someone like yourself who has seen... It's an old motherfucker that's been around. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> just like, yeah, yes, and... I might be the oldest, <laughs> I might be the oldest guest you ever had on nah, this show. Nah, we, got, we, no. we had Jane Elliott. We had, a, you know, we had some okay. people up here spitting that shit. All right. Um, but on that, I, I would love for you, because you lived through it, uh, 67, 68, 69, right? You being young. Mm -hmm. um, how it felt, because, you know, I, I heard from my dad, but, you know, maybe young people, their parents aren't old enough that are watching us right now to remember how it felt to, to lose leadership like Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, um, to have voices like a James Baldwin at that time, right? And people that were really active and really doing something, Muhammad Ali being active. Mm. Like, you had that as a as a young yeah. person. On the C-Rap Brown, Stokely Carmichael. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these were people that, that inspired us, that, you know, said things that kind of stick with you forever. You know, you understand what um, 
what the phenomenon is that you're experiencing. But, I mean, there are also cultural differences, too, because I grew up in Tennessee in segregation. So from the time I was born until I left Tennessee, you know, I had another idea of, of what America was anyway mm -hmm. because, you know, I grew up in an America where there were places I couldn't go or things I couldn't do or I saw the, you know, whites-only signs at, on water fountains or at particular places and all this other stuff. So when things happen culturally now or even then, I was not shocked by them in the specific way that most people are shocked now because it was what I expected because the dominant culture has always tried to make me believe that they were in charge in a, in a specific way. And I'm not shocked by, you know, the new administration or how, you know, dude ran his campaign or any of that. It was mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, when I hear Make America Great Again, I just, I just kind of smile. <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. I was there when they thought America was great or That's when right. it was great for them. So, so once they get, you know, all the Muslims out of the country and move the brown people back out of the country where they want them, you know, the next thing they want to want to see us bent over in the cotton fields singing, singing spirituals. You know, yeah. and then America free, be, free, right, free. And then maybe. America be great again. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I don't care. You know what? What folks? Go, oh, that's some racist stuff. Uh, so it's like that's the image they want. You know, those are the guys. I mean, he looks exactly like those dudes I used to see with the white shirts rolled up and the suspenders, and the only thing missing is that little nasty half a cigar sticking out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, but he's that same dude, and they're the same cats, and that's what they want. Um, and all we can do is continue to resist, raise our voices, um, worry about them starting a war, because uh, the only way they can clean out you know, Chicago, Detroit, Watts, and all these other places is rein reinstate the draft and put all these young brothers on the front line mm -hmm. and hope they get killed mm -hmm. and don't come back home. Mm -hmm. And then they can have another part of making America great, because then they, they, they uh, start to decimate the population. You know, to make sure that, you know, we're not procreating and doing all the things that we normally do. So there's a lot of stuff, that, you know, people need to, to wake up to and think about and look around and see that they need to resist and fight. Now, even if we get rid of dudes, the dudes behind them are just as bad yeah. or worse because worse. They're, actually, they're actually kind of smart, you know? Right. He's a puppet. And, he's just a figurehead. Well, he's, 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 he's reactionary and, you know, kind of... Twisted mentally, you know, these guys are calculating, you know, those are the guys we got to worry about. Samuel L. Jackson, ladies, I, I appreciate you sharing that, man. That's that's so much love. And on that, um, well, I guess not really on that, but we saw a major shift at the Oscars um, this year. Really? I'm just messing with you. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> what? What? I'm like, no, you're not. What? Well, it oh, seemed right, like they right. made it. Well, attempt. they weren't Oscars so white this year. You <laughs> yeah. know? But, you know, I mean, even when the hashtag Oscar so white was happening, and you got to go back and look at that year and go, well, what movie should have been nominated that, did, that didn't get nominated? That well, and you that's love where the so issue much starts, that, though. You know, the issue starts with the movies that are getting made. Well, yeah. Right. Number one, that's the part. You know, I mean, there are, there are younger people um, who are writing stories, they're younger people directing, and they reflect the world that they grew up in in an interesting way that makes films about a real world, a world where you see people of color or stories about people of color. I mean, this time last year, everybody was waiting on Birth of a Nation to mm -hmm. be at the Oscars and burn it up, you know, and say, ah, that's the movie right here, Birth of a Nation, da 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 You know, and then some other shit happened. Well, they tore, they <laughs> tore that down. They let Casey Woo. Affleck win this year, but they yeah, well, had a problem with Nate Paul. Yeah, well, you're right, and that happens, and then you get uh, Moonlight, you get, you know, Hidden Figures, you get Fences. Uh, there's some other movies out there that probably could have been, you know, part of that conversation, but, you know, it's, it's, it's really great that these people told their stories. You know, I mean, hopefully... Next year, there'll be even more or there'll be stories by women or women of color that get their things out there. Um, I don't expect, um, what's the name of the horror movie that's out right now? Oh, oh Get, get out. out. Get Out. You get Out it? ain't going to be Have there. you seen it? I haven't seen it yet, okay. but I plan to see it. Uh, that's a whole other story. Wait, wait, wait. wait what? Now, what? I think it's great. 
that that movie is doing everything that it's doing and people are loving it and they're feeling it. And some hating it and... Yeah, but, yeah, well, we know who hates it. But <laughs> the thing in my mind is, I know the young brother is in the movie and he's British. So there are a lot of British, black British actors that work All in the country. Time. All, All the, the time. time. Yeah, All the time. So I tend to wonder what would that movie have been with an American brother who really... Feels understands that. that in a way because, I mean, Daniel grew up in a country where, you know, they've been interracial dating for 100 years, you know. Right. Britain's, there's only about like eight real white people left in Britain. The rest <laughs> of them, you know, mixed. <laughs> so well, what would a brother from America have made of that role? You know, and, I, I, and I'm sure the director helped and, you know, some things are universal, but everything ain't. That's right. You know, which is one of the things about you know, about Selma and some other things. I go, well, you know, there are some brothers from America that could have been in that movie that would have, you know, had a different idea about how that works or about how King thinks or about what how What is King that casting because... thing where you get the, the British black actor versus the American black actor to play the black? What is that? They're cheaper than us for one thing. Huh. <laughs> they don't cost this much. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, okay. In an interesting way, unless you, you know, um, an unknown brother that they find in some way. Um, but, and they think they're better trained for some reason than we are because they're classically trained. I don't know. I don't know what the love affair is with all of that. You know, it's all good. Mm. Everybody needs to work, but there's a lot of brothers here that need to work too. Yeah. Right. I always wondered that. I didn't know if that was just happenstance, but you know me, I'm a conspiracy theorist. So I, there's well, a. They come here because, you know, there are more opportunities and they actually get paid when they work here. You know, they make more money in this country than they do in that country, which is fine, you know. I mean, how how long did it take you to figure out, you know, Strike a Bell wasn't, you know, just a brother from Baltimore? Right. <laughs> Until you heard it. Stringer, yeah, Until yeah. Until you heard it, just talking, yeah. you go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. For real? Yeah. And, yeah. and not to mention that the white people, too. You know, the white cop was British. And a bunch of British folks on that show. I like Sam. I could do this all day. Right. How did you feel about day. How did you feel about Moonlight? I enjoy Moonlight a lot, you know. Um, I loved watching, you know, the transitions of all the, you know, brothers that played that one particular character. They were great. Um, I'm glad Mahershala, you know, won. Right. Because um, now that He's from Oakland. Him. There you go. Oakland. Oh, is he? Yeah. He's oh. not British. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. He used to be a rapper. Take it a step further. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I read that the other day. <laughs> rapper. Rapper, baller. Yeah, da, yeah, da, yeah, da, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, he wasn't in Coach Carter. He didn't go to that high school. <laughs> he wasn't in yeah, Richmond. Yeah, nah, yeah, he didn't go to he Richmond. Nah, he didn't go to Richmond. <laughs> Hanging out at Her Hercules. <laughs> nah. uh, all those places. But um, it's going to give him an opportunity to shape his career in a different way. You know, once you stop going to auditions and you start getting choices, you know, people always go, yeah, you got this. Yeah. You're so lucky. Blah, blah, blah. Things change. Because when you go to auditions, you know, you kind of, taking the job that somebody gives you and you just hope you get in that particular movie. When you're sitting at home reading scripts and you got to make choices about what you want to do or what you want to do next, then you're kind of mapping out how you're going to get through that. And you don't get as many chances as those white actors to do movies that don't make money. You know, mm -hmm. you got to put asses in seats like pretty quick to keep working, you know? So... We'll see how that works out for him. I hope it works well, and I hope he makes some great choices, and he's doing stuff that make him happy. I mean, you can't do things because you want to get paid. You have to do things that you feel in here make you happy when you do them. You know, I choose movies sometimes just because they're movies I would have gone to see when I was a kid, mm. like King Kong. Right. You know, or I choose movies sometimes just because I like this story, but I don't want to be the lead guy in it, but I want to be in it so that people will We'll have an awareness of it, and I'll do two or three days in it, so people will get there. And, you know, hope they see me. You know, but it's it's an interesting dynamic when you get to make the choice. Do you do the young actors reach out to Samuel L. Jackson and ask you for advice and guidance? Is that nobody you... got my phone number? <laughs> Ain't nobody calling. This. <laughs> now I run into guys in different places. Um, it's like when I was on uh, Kong. Um, I had uh, Corey and Jason that were fresh off, you know, uh, straight out of Compton. Right. And we started calling um, Corey.
Corey because Corey got that new 24 job when he was shooting cones. So we started calling him Black Bauer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He is like, a Black Bauer. Black Bauer. Yeah. yeah and so he was learning how to hold guns and be a, you know. Tough guy. Tough guy from yeah. these uh, SEALs that were on set. So they were working the shit out of him. Um, but I talked to Jason and Corey, you know, and have fun with them, you know, when um, they want to talk about that stuff or what was it, you know, when I first got to Hollywood. But everybody's doesn't feel like they need advice. Sometimes guys think they know it already or they're there and they got it hooked up. You know, when I first got to Hollywood, I was fortunate. Um, my agent happens to be really good friends with people like Sidney Poitier. So I was at her house at a party and he pulled me over on the sofa and sat me down and we started talking and, and we played golf together for a couple of years. Wow. You know, and talked every day when we were out on the golf course about Hollywood and what was happening and how it was for him and the difference between me, him, and what's happening now. And I would tell him what I'm going through with um, different studios and how they work. And he was like, you know, it's one of those people that, you know, that helped you, that helped me shape how I was navigating, you know, and um, taught me the power of no. You know, mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, people want you to do something, you just go, nah, you know, and then they, before you know it, they're back, you know, and you go, uh, well, how about now? And you go, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, and you find something else and then people start competing. So the things you have to learn, you know, the business changes and goes through different things. So the fact now that there's so many platforms for young actors to work, cuts down on the I guess the 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 animosity that actors have in Hollywood they used to have that was a huge difference between New York and Hollywood because when I was here we rode the train together we went to an audition I'd see people we were all going to the same auditions anyway we walked to the next audition together we pool our money and eat together. We go watch each other work. We do stuff. When you're in California, you're in your car, and you drive to an audition. You see the same brothers that you see at all the auditions, and that one brother in there gets the majority of the job. So everybody hates that motherfucker, you know. <laughs> he's there and he's getting all the jobs. So you don't have that same camaraderie that we had when we were here, and we cared about each other. Or we would call somebody and go, "I went to an audition today, and I ain't right for that, but you are." Yeah. So you need to get there. Yeah. They don't do that in Hollywood. Got so it, it. the dynamic changes. But because there's so many platforms through, you know, cable and television is television better than movies now. Well, you the know? Netflix, the HBO, yeah. Yeah, and all the, that. Yeah, the Amazon, yeah. all of that, you know, uh, FX, sci-fi. They're great shows out there. And they all have people of color in them. So there are a lot more people working. So there are a lot more opportunities for them to work. And there's still shows coming on. Like um, what Bernie Sands is getting ready to happen. That's some kind of frat frat TV yeah. show. Mm -hmm. And Dear White People, the series mm -hmm. is, you know, hitting. So there's stuff in the quad, you know. So there's stuff, you know, for everybody to do. Being Mary Jane, then, you know, Luke Cage, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. So there's great opportunities for young people to, you know, show their stuff. Plus you got, you know, web series, people doing that. Issa Rae came from a web series. Right. You know? right. She, she did a whole bunch of dope stuff on That's incredible. Online. Her story yeah. is incredible. I love oh, her story. Listen, I used to love Ratchet Peace Theater. You know, mm -hmm. I show that to people all the time, you know, when she used to break down the, the hot rap song yeah, yeah. of the week. That was hilarious. To me. <laughs> I loved it. Well, they're wrapping us. Um, before I let you out of here, Samuel, um, Samuel L. Jackson. Sam's good. Sam's good. Sam, yeah. uh, are you in Black Panther? No, never was. So Black Panthers weren't a Southern thing. They were like an East Coast. No, no, Coast. no, not the Black Panthers, the movie. The, oh, the, in the, the movie In Black the Panther. movie Black Panther. Uh, no, they're not letting my black ass go through Wakanda. I was trying. I asked. I was like, what do you mean? That, said, you are already uh, in the, we're used to, we're getting I'm the In the universe. That's what I'm saying. Hey, you didn't see me in Civil War. You know, I'm still out there trying to figure out what, you know. The skull. They trying to not. There. They not trying to make cut you out of the the whole legacy, are they? Not trying no, no, to make no, sure, no, 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 no. I had nine picture deal. I've only done like seven of them. Okay. Yeah, I still got stuff to do. And damn, um, no yeah. Wakanda for you. Yeah. Damn, no Wakanda. Samuel L. Jackson, no, is in King Kong. Uh, there isn't King Kong hanging off the tower with the pristine white lady this time. It's actually taking place on an island, so it's going to be very interesting and very dope. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson, it's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you. Congrats, and just Thank thanks, thanks for sharing the day. Yeah, love to come back.